Yo, I got a shout out though to Dion, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know, Dose of Dion, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be doing a Detroit Lions mock draft, as you guys can see. This time, it is a Rashawn Slater mock draft, but this time, we're doing it a little bit differently. You guys can see the mock draft machine. So I'm going to be doing this one with you guys so you guys can see how the draft board goes and you can see the picks that we make. Also, we're using PFN so that we can trade back. We have not done a trade back in any of these, but if the opportunity presents itself, we will make it happen. We will definitely make it happen to add to our six picks that we have this season. You know what? There may be less information that I'm able to give you because everything I say about the players that we draft will be off the top of my head, but... It's, it's a little bit different. So let me know which one you like better. Do you like it better when I just do the picks or do you like it better like this? Let me know at the end of the video what you guys think. But let's get this thing started. Let's just dive right into it. This is a Rashawn Slater draft, okay? So we need Rashawn Slater to fall to seven. If not, we're going to have to restart it. So please fall to seven, Rashawn, please. All right, Zach Wilson, two. Three is Fields. Okay. Fields been going a lot on this mock draft similar to three. But okay. Lance goes four. This is set up for us to get Slater. They go Sewell here. No, Waddle. Okay, Sewell is still, uh, still available. Oh, wow. Ha, <laughs> ha. Okay, so this is tempting. Mm. So the reason it's tempting, I know the Chargers are probably moving up for Sewell. But if Slater can fall to 13, and we can still acquire our 47th instead of the 7th. This is really tempting. I mean, woo, haha, <laughs> this is tough. I, I want to try it, but I don't want to miss out. As, you know, let's just try it. Why not? We can, we can always restart. They took certain. Okay. Hold up. Wait, Panthers, don't take Sewell. Panthers, please don't take Sewell. They took Sewell. No, Broncos, don't do it. Broncos, don't do this, please. Okay. Cowboys, you don't need offensive line. There you go. Oh, no, Giants. Uh, Giants, Kyle Pitts is right there. You took Darisaw. That works for me. Eagles, Kyle Pitts. Oh, Delaria. I don't care. You know what? We got Rashawn Slater and we just... Wait, wait, hold on. Let me write down the details of this trade. A second round. And we need a second second round for 2022. And that helps future picks too. Another sec. Man, look at next year's draft picks. That's nice. So let's take Slater. Boom. We didn't really talk about Rashawn Slater, so I might have to here. So Rashawn Slater in 2018, right tackle. 2019, he moved to left tackle to protect that side. I think he took big strides in 2019. I thought 2018, he was still showing that athleticism, uh, but he was getting lost. You know, definitely he was getting beat to the inside more than he was in 2019. Then it shows as much strength, as much power. I don't think he wasn't staying connected as consistently. Still a good player, but 2019, I think he took big steps forward. Now, of course, his calling card is that athleticism. You know, the recovery speed, the ability to keep up with some speed rushers. Everybody talks about the Chase Young game. Um, but it's really that part of his game that people really like. Now, the arm length, there was concerns about it. Penny Sewell came out with a similar arm length. Some people say he can move to guard. Maybe he could, but this is a player that has played right tackle in college, moved left tackle, got better at that position. For us, he'll probably slide in at that right tackle role for year one, assuming he wins that role. And then next year, you know, he'll probably stay at the right tackle position. Maybe way down the road, he starts left tackle. But what it does is it adds, you know, talent to the offensive line, really just completes the offensive line, in my opinion. It gives you really good depth. And then when you look till next season with Terrell Crosby, and Big V could be gone, then you have your offensive line really just set up because, uh, you know, then you could have Logan Stenberg hopefully by that time, maybe not, but you would have Jonah Jackson still in place, hopefully Frank Ragnow, Taylor Decker with a team that's going to probably want run a lot, and I think he does really good with positioning, opening up holes. He's just not a mauler, you know, and that's why I like Big V at guard more there because I think he's more of a mauler, but I think his athleticism really help him play action, especially bootleg rollouts when the quarterback is outside of the pocket. He also can pull from that position, which is pretty cool, but when the quarterback is outside of the pocket, uh, I think it will be very beneficial official for a guy like Jared Goff because he'll have an athletic offensive tackle protecting him. So we went with Rashawn Slater. We're going to continue to do this with other uh, top prospects as well. Arm length issue will show up at times. It's not a myth. It does show up at times, uh, but I don't think it's something that, you know, should take him out of the tackle position. Also block into the second level because he's so athletic. He could pick up linebackers at the next level uh, as well. So he's got a lot of versatility to his game because he is so athletic. And I guess in a pinch, you could push him to guard, but this time it's Rashawn Slater's turn. So let's get back to the draft. And, uh, yeah, there's our trade back. And now we get uh, two second-round picks. Now, we did lose our third, but we got two seconds, so it's okay. It's all right. And we got that second-round pick for next year if we want to put it back into this draft, you know, to trade back up. Cormore goes there. We got Samuel Cosme to the, the Steelers. Anything crazy here? Farley to the Jets. Farley has been falling a lot on these recently, probably because of the surgery. I just want to see if there's anything crazy. Chase goes six. It's weird that Waddle would be for Chase, but I, I don't know. I mean, sometimes they just like, hey, won't speed. I, all right, do you, man. There was some wildness going on here. The Vikings went with Davis. They probably would have taken Slater if we would have passed. Cardinals went Kyle Pitts. Okay, that makes sense. It makes sense. Them falling to 16 was beautiful for them. 
uh, Collins to the Browns. I like that pick for them. And now let's keep it going. Oh, Merrick was sitting there. I I probably could have attempted to trade up. Oh, no, it's okay. It's all right. No, we're good. Ravens goes 38. Raiden's been flying up too. Ever since I made that video? No. I have the same thing. Okay. All right. Oh, gosh. This is tempting. <laughs> Oh no, this is tempting too because okay, Creed Humphrey's still there. No, this is tempting because I could have picked 46 and 47 and get my third round back. Losing my oh my gosh, what is happening? Okay, and there's a lot of names out there that I like. Wait a minute, what's this one? I don't want that. Kadarius Tony's there. I want to take different players, but Tony is there. Baron Browning, those are all both of my watch list, and so is Richie Grant. <laughs> I don't want to lose them though. <laughs> I don't want to lose them though because I feel like I will. I have both of these picks. What I would like to do is get both Baron Browning and Richie Grant and call it a day. That's that's what I would like to have happen. All right, but we're gonna try it. Here we go. Let's let's see if this happens. We're gonna go Browning first because I think he usually jumps first. Baron Brown. We'll explain these if this happens. Hold up. Okay, Cox goes forty-two. Now, if this doesn't work out, maybe we can grab Kadarius Tony still. Let's see, forty-three. Jalen Phillips, still possible. I'm tempted to trade up, but I don't want to. Kelvin Joseph. Oh, Raiders trade up. Terrence Marshall, 45. One more pick. Denver. Creed Humphrey. Bam, baby. Way to pull it off. That was beautiful. That was well done, everybody. Good job. No, Saints. Whoa, I love it. All right, let's explain these picks because we're going to take Richie Grant. I could take Tony, though. I have no issues taking Kadarius Tony. But I took Tony last time, so we're going to mix it up. So first off, let's start with the Baron Browning pick. We did a video on Baron Browning if you want more detail on this. So Baron Browning comes in about six foot four, two forty, Really good size there. Some people list him at six foot three, uh, But really for Baron Browning, it's about the upside, you know, as I touched on, because he's fast. He's got the great size, and there's a lot of undersized linebackers in this class. But he's one of the few that does give you really good size with guys like Zayvon Collins. Actually, Micah Parsons is now up there. But it's the versatility. I don't think he's a tweener as much as he's versatile because he can play pretty well at a lot of different spots you can put him out wide he can use him as a pass rusher because he can win with speed there he's got the good size so he can be a pass rusher he's a pretty physical player he loves to lay out some huge hits he can be useful in man-to-man -man coverage got better in zone but still you know not exactly where you want him to be there not as much as a playmaker in coverage as you'd like to see he's still kind of slow to react to things can you know get himself out of position it's, it's a lot of things that he needs to clean up to his game and he's still you know showed his consistency still really up till last season was the first time that he actually became like a starter for Ohio State you know I don't think he's as day one ready as maybe a Pete Warner is but I think there's a lot of upside here to his game his instincts aren't there he just needs to really catch up with the game uh so he may not be as impactful as you'd like to see from a second round pick but I think the upside is just really just tremendous and uh, I thought I'd mix it up with a linebacker pick here and I think the size of the Lions will like but the size and speed like I said it just reminds me kind of a Demario Davis and I think it gives the Lions a lot of scheme versatility with him but here's how I look at the Baron Browning pick first off when I look at the linebacker group I don't love it I personally don't love it after about Monty Rice I like a lot of these guys honestly but after Monty Rice I'm kind of like ooh, I don't know I don't know here. You know, you got Wallow, Snowden, maybe more of an edge there. Derek Barnes, more of just a pass rusher. Hilliard, you know, so rotational played so far on the outside. Hilliard actually could be okay. Buddy Johnson, I like him early downs. He's just super slow. Like, I don't love the depth of the linebacker class like I do, you know, some of the other positions. Like, cornerback, the way they set up these mocks, like, there's a lot of late guys I like. I like Darren Hall. I like Elijah. We did a video on him. Wild Goose is okay, but he plays a lot of zone. Goman is some going is someone we're gonna definitely target in this video. We probably will draft him just so you know. Uh just to mix it up because that's someone. Oh, also Gilbert. Don't forget about Mark Gilbert. That guy got derailed by injuries and he was supposed to be a top pick. All right, so I like the depth there. This, specifically with Baron Browning, here's how I look at it, right? The Lions have Jamie Collins, who they restructured. He'll be here for probably a couple more years. But aside from that, is there anybody that we're 100 percent sure is gonna be here in the future? No, because they're all one-year deals, right? So we have, you know, Tavai. I don't know how he's going to fit in this defense. I don't also know what the Lions scheme is actually is exactly going to be with the linebackers next season. Are they going to run it like the Saints did? You know, run a 4-2-5? If they do that, I think Browning could fit. He could play inside, you know, with a guy like Jamie Collins. Are they going to go to a 3-4? And if they do that, I think he can play inside or outside. He can play on the edge because he can pass rush. Or if we go to a 4-3, I think he can play outside linebacker. Probably not the Mike position, but more outside backer here. So I think there's a lot of versatility with Browning, one. Two, I think his upside is tremendous. Now, I don't know if he's going to be a day one impactful like maybe uh, Pete Warner would or a Nick Bolton, but I do think the upside is there. 
the size and speed, that combination, he reminds me a lot of Demario Davis coming out of the draft. He's like 240, six foot two, six foot three, and he can fly around the field. He can help in coverage. He's a thumper. All of those combined make me make this pick. I don't think he's completely there yet. He was kind of inconsistent with Ohio State, was kind of on and off, but I think this is more of a pick for the future, but also a pick that, uh, you know, really helps just add a whole bunch of talent to our linebacker group that's really, I think, lacking some talent right now. For this year, he doesn't have to play a huge role because he could be a backup this year, but next year, when well, maybe is Anzalone gone? Is Younger's Maven gone? You know, what are we doing with Jamie? Is, you know, we restructure his contract. Is he going to stay here throughout that? Yes, I'm going there. And then we have Richie Grant. I'm going to take Richie Grant. Richie Grant checks in about six foot 194, so honestly, pretty good size for the safety position. He's just lacking really that top end speed right now. I think his fuel for the game is so good that you can play him at the deep safety position uh, but he doesn't have great speed it's just a slightly below average especially for a guy that if you wanted to play at the deep safety spot but I think he's really good right now uh, he breaks on passes really quickly I mean he has no hesitation in his game he's a very confident player but he sees the game at a very high level he finds himself in the right position all the time and you talk about a defender as a run defender really good run defender as well I mean you can slide in the box you can count on him he doesn't miss many tackles uh, he plays with a very physical style to shoot down he's not going to shy away from contact like I said he doesn't miss tackles then in coverage, great feeling zone. You know, you can have him back in. He can sit underneath, but then you can also slide him into the slot. No issues there. He stays very connected, can stay very tight, very fluid hips, uh, can flip really quickly, and just doesn't give up much airspace at that slot position. Now, against tight ends, he could have issues because of just simply the size, uh, but you can trust him to slide a slot. Line safety right now, how many guys at the safety position can you really trust to cover in the slot? He's got the physicality to his game. He's a great tackler. He's just missing that top end speed in the great range. He is already 23 years old. His length can show up a little bit, but he still finds a way to make plays on the football. His stats speak for themselves in terms of production. I mean, he's just an incredible. Uh, coverage guy from the safety position so I think he's the type of player that you plug in there plug and play and uh, he would could arguably be our best safety right away now Richie Grant is arguably the best safety in this class I know sounds crazy You're like what I'm gonna pull these up that way you guys can see him the biggest size as you guys can see they say average size and play speed but Grant is just he's super talented uh, Richie Grant is the type of player that started playing the deep safety position at UCF that was mainly his role and he looked really good there and then more recently they thrown him into the box and to not be that big of a safety you know He's not a uh, Diablo type of size, 25, you know, but he does have solid size, but he played in the box. He played kind of like that 4-2-5 role, in my opinion. Also, UCF plays kind of like an NFL defense. But he could play in the box, played really well there, can slide to slot, no issues. He can man-to-man -man cover with no problems, which is what they need guys to do. They need to be able to sit in a box in a 4-2-5 and also slide out and cover, you know, slots. But then the fact that he can play the deep safety position, doesn't have the best speed, but he can do it. He can really do everything on field, good tackler, good coverage guy, gets his, you know, hands on passes. And I think he just plays with so much effort every play, flies around the field. I think he's just so talented. Now, I do like the safety depth of this class. I like the... I mean, I really do. Ardarius Washington's a beast. Cisco's good. I like Stearns. He's solid. See, he's okay. He's probably closer to the box type of player. Wiggins is all right. I can't exactly remember what I have about Wiggins. Sean Wade's kind of a slot here. Diablo. I like Diablo. I really do like Diablo at his size and his ability. Damar Hamlin and Paris Ford play very similar in Pittsburgh, so I like both those guys. They just play super aggressive. I mean, they're just smacking people. Tariq Thompson kind of fits the Chauncey Gardner-Johnson mold uh, of that kind of player, so he could jump into the slot. Paris Ford, you know, we just talked about him. Brady Breeze is a playmaker, and he's kind of low on here as well i like the depth for this position but the saints have taken a high safety in the past and uh, i think when you look at the safety group we're lacking maybe playmakers but we're lacking you know just yeah just really playmakers guys that can play different spots that we can really rely upon and this will be a jump start kickstart for this secondary that just needs talent Simple as that, they need talent. You know, we have guys here. Marlo's cool. He can cover tight ends, but he really can't cover slots, in my opinion. You know, he can help against the run. I think he can play deep a little bit, too, but you don't really have a guy that can cover slots. Will hasn't really proven that. Walker might be able to, but he's kind of big there. I don't know. I just like the thought of a guy like Richie Grant to jumpstart this. So we're going to go with Grant. I could take Tony easily, but we've already drafted him. You could go with Stokes. Carl's Basham, Boogie's a beast. We know that. But I'm going to go with Grant. So now we have Richie Grant. I forgot the guy's name. I literally Baron Browning, a linebacker, and Rashawn Slater. Let me write this down. And this is just from the trade. I didn't even trade up to make this happen. That's why this is beautiful. This draft has went beautifully well, man. I love this. If the draft goes like this, count me in, man. Hold up, hold up. I don't even think it's that. I mean, it is maybe a little unrealistic, but maybe not. I mean, Sewell fell, so it gave us that option. We were taking Slater regardless. So yeah, I mean, I like it. Now our next pick comes at 72. I would say our remaining needs. We definitely want to get a corner. Um, we definitely want to grab a receiver and that may be our next pick depending on who's there. 
And after that, I mean, maybe, you know, you're talking another linebacker. You could grab another safety. We'll see. Uh, we only have, let's see, we only have three picks left. Yeah, three picks left. You don't even have to worry about it. Now, hold up. Let me pause right here because Elijah Moore is still available. It's tempting to just try to jump up here. And Kadarius Tony is still available. Should we try this? Can I, I, I kind of want to just see what the Bills want. I mean, I don't want to give up a lot here because this is a long way to jump. But I'm just curious if I could throw in that Chargers pick if they would give it to me. Is that worth it? I, I don't know. I mean, I've never really done that kind of thing before. But I thought, so what we basically did was got rid of next year's second round pick. Not that was here before, but the one we traded for with the with the Chargers. It allows me to move up and take Kadarius Tony. Now, Kadarius Tony, another guy we've already drafted. But to me, I look at Kadarius Tony as one of just those guys, you get the ball in his hands, he's a playmaker. You just get in his hands and say, get out of the way. Kind of similar for Elijah Moore, maybe. Uh, Rondell Moore is a little bit undersized. I think he's maybe less of a receiving threat, but he's awesome too. He just had some injuries. He's already off the board though. Kadarius Tony's just a beast. The Lions are going to meet with him. The fact that he fell here, I just wanted to see if we can make it happen. I probably could have offered less. Probably should have offered less for sure, you know, than what I did. But regardless, we got Kadarius Tony. The second time, I was surprised he fell, so I had to do this kind of thing. I just thought it was great to trade up and just mix it up, have some fun with the mock draft. Checking about six foot 177. Yeah, slightly underweight a little bit here. Uh, a little bit bigger than Devontae Smith, but not much. So a very you know small frame that he still probably could fill out a little bit more but what part of you like about his game is just to run after catch I mean that's what it is you get the ball in his hands and he's gonna make plays and when you think about a guy like Jared Goff 41% of his passing yards last season came in the air now some of that was scheme some of that's because they didn't protect extremely well but it is a lot of you know get it to the receiver and let him make plays and Goff would love to have a guy like that I think we have the speedsters I think we have guys that can stretch the field I think we actually have some size as well with Perriman Tyrell uh, Williams I mean even Geronimo Allison maybe you could throw into that mix but the Lions, do they really have a guy that's proven other than speed that you get it in their hands and they can make a play with the football? Maybe not. Tony can be very creative with him. Uh, you can, you know, when he spread out the defense, obviously he can play in the inside. And I think he's also someone that gets a lot of separation. You know, he may not be effective on the deep routes because I think, don't think he has the best top end speed. Uh, he hasn't made tons of t contested grabs, but that's because he gets open. He gets a lot of separation. Lions need separation guys. So, you know, he doesn't have a lot of average yards per depth, depth per target. It's under eight yards. He's a very underneath type of weapon, but that's where you're going to use him. You're going to use him in screen right get the ball out of uh, golf's hands you can be creative use them reverses things like that and he can just be very tough really good route runner can sink into his routes tough to keep up with man coverage guys just have problems keeping up with him just super tough to match up with he does have pretty good height and he doesn't drop the football i mean you look at so many of these guys that are so talented with ball in the hands well can they catch it first the guy doesn't drop the ball either so he's very reliable there too and the lions have already met with him so why not and uh yeah we got a top receiver there so we've really filled out some strong needs this draft is I think went well, and it's not like we've given up any part of our future. I mean, that was just a pick that I got because uh, we made that trade in the beginning. And we're just heading into round three, and we've got in Rashawn Slater, Baron Browning, Richie Grant, Kadarius Tony. Four of our biggest needs are filled with some of the top talents, and we haven't given up anything for a future. If I can just acquire more picks, I'm all in for that. Uh, still need, what else do we need? We do need a cornerback. We do need a corner. But as I mentioned before, uh, I don't, you know, like, I have some late round corners that I really like. So the fact that we're waiting here is perfectly fine. I don't think I needed to trade up and jump. I could have trade up and jumped up for someone, but I, I, you know, I like the fact that Tony was there. So I went with that. Definitely would have been nice to see Tyson Campbell fall, but he never falls that far. True Williams, we drafted him last time. If he's there, we, man, we probably won't take him because we took him last time. We have 112 coming up because we got rid of one, uh, one, uh, 101. So waiting a little bit longer than usual here. We don't need Cisco because we already got our safety, which is cool. Really, these two picks are just to grab a corner. If we could trade back, great. And uh, really whatever else we want. I mean, honestly. Now, this this is one of those things where it's like, okay, yeah, I'm giving up next year's seventh. But I'm also acquiring another pick this year. I I really don't want to mortgage our future at all. Even if that's just a seventh round pick. So, I'm wondering if I can just say, hey, hold up. How about we'll give you 112. We don't want to give up our seventh, though. You know, 222. Just want to stop in real quick to let you guys know that if you guys were ever interested in investing in our favorite sports teams like us as Detroit Lions fans, you guys should check out www.symbol.app. It's a way to basically invest in your favorite sports team and earn a payout when your team wins. So for us as Detroit Lions fans, now we can finally invest in something that we actually know. And with the draft coming up very soon, this is your opportunity to get involved. You guys can use promo code DOD for a $10 bonus deposit. Check it out. Dang. I, I wanted to see. It's, it's, 
I really just don't want to give up future picks if I don't have to. You know, I, my what I'm what's going in my head now is and Ambry Thomas makes sense at corner. I think Ambry actually might be a slot the next level. He was a really good player with Michigan, but you know he did give up some big plays. He does have a lot of things he needs to clean up, and he didn't play last season. I don't think. So, you know, he's a good tackler. He is pretty tall, so he could probably play outside. And he's fast. He's very fast, even though he doesn't always technically not super sound. So sometimes he doesn't show up, but he is very fast. So that one makes sense. That's why I'm considering that. I did tell you guys Tay Gowen is a guy I'm going to probably draft, which is at 300. Because to me, Tay Gowen is a type of player that should not be listed here. 19 did not play last season. He opted out except because of his daughter's health. And, uh, you know, he's worried about that. But Gowen was a really good corner. I mean, I'm talking statistically, this guy was phenomenal. I think it was like he allowed a 40% completion percentage. He was really good. It was just a level of competition. It was the fact that he hasn't played that much. He was a Juco player before that. He's got great size, great speed. He does get a little handsy. You know, he does get a little handsy. But, I mean, for, for a late round pick, I think it makes a lot of sense. I really just don't want to give up a seventh round pick. What I'm thinking I could do here is if I accept this deal, Maybe I could consider that my next pick trading back and trying to pick up a seventh round next year to re re regain that pick. So I'm going to I'm gonna try that. I'm going to try that. So let's write down the details here. I'm going to try to get that pick back. I'm going to give up a 2022 20, seventh. And I want 113 and 193. Because I want that extra pick to kind of play around with. So we're going to go back one spot here. They took Shelvin. I wasn't going to do that anyway. I think I'm going to take Ambry Thomas. I have not drafted Ambry Thomas. I would take Washington, but I already have my safety, so I don't think it makes sense there. Monty Rice. And if we go, if we need a guy like that, then it works. If 113 here, we have Monty Rice, a six foot two thirty eight pound linebacker out of Georgia. Now, when I look at a guy like Monty Rice, I mean, his calling card is clearly the speed. It's the sideline to sideline. It's the rangy speed. He's the type of guy that can play inside linebacker, fit really well in a 4-3 defense, playing that Mike linebacker position. But he's really good for uh, definitely a one-gap scheme, allowing him to play free, just allowing him to use his speed, sideline to sideline, athleticism. I mean, that is his calling card. He's a pretty good tackler as well. Uh, he can kind of sift through blockers. He can be very beneficial as a blitzer because he is so quick and he's tough to keep up with honestly not bad size there at 238 it's really good he's just kind of short just kind of short but sometimes a lot of times you'll find that with you know middle linebackers he probably won't give you much as an outside linebacker at least right now and he may never give you that much as an outside linebacker because he doesn't have the great height he's not great in coverage he still is very reactionary he's still kind of slow to react to things at this point he just kind of flies around and makes plays in the run game that athletically can match up a man-to-man -man coverage but in zone he gets lost way too often he doesn't have great length uh he still hasn't proven to be a playmaker doesn't really make a play on the football kind of like cameron mcgrone in that way but cameron mcgrone goes earlier uh so i like monty rice here a lot because of where i'm getting him at in the draft i feel like this is a great value if you go you know pushing day two it might be a little early but i think it's a day three pick i think you're getting really good value here for a player that you know doesn't have to start right away but down the road could be a nice really nice interior player for you the lions the, the issue is i just don't know what scheme because we have not seen him coach our defense if it's a 4-2-5 it's tough because he doesn't fit perfectly because he's kind of a little bit undersized for that but he's like Jalen maven and they re-signed maven but maven's more of an outside linebacker monty's more the inside backer so that's that's why that pick is tough so that pick to me just really depends on what defense the lions show yeah, that's a tough one. That's that's a really tough one. But we went with Rice there. Similar to like a Nick Bolton, just not, not as polished right now. Yeah, so we'll just throw that in there. I mean, that one definitely could be out. It just depends. I don't I don't know what, what defense we're going to be running next season. So that's why that pick's so tough. He could play inside. Browning could kick the outside. Play in a 3-4. I think he could play probably an inside in a 3-4. That looks like a, that's maybe like an over, over set that looks like a 4-3. Because then he could still, you know, not as much worry about taking on the offensive lineman. Because he's a sideline, sideline, rangy inside linebacker. That's how he's built. And the Lions didn't bring back Jared Davis. So I just wonder if I made the right decision there. On the clock, 153. We have two picks left. Definitely uh, got to look at corner here. Uh, Shakir Brown and Rodarius Williams, I both drafted. Cornell Powell late. I'm thinking I'm going to grab corner here. I don't want to take someone I've already taken. But to be honest with you, aside from Elijah Griffin, I don't I don't love the other... Like, I like Rod Rodarius. I like Shakir Brown because he can play slot too. Oh, Shakir Brown. I know we've already taken him, but I know he can play both spots there. And he's very inexperienced. So I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Shakir Brown. 
Brown, once again, here comes in at pick number 153, and uh, he comes in at 5'11", 190 pounds there. When you look at Shakur Brown, what you like about him the most probably is the fact that last season was his best season, uh, that he made plays on the football. He tracks the ball so well, and so many guys, they can get in position, but they can't make a play on the football. Corn Elder. But he is kind of the opposite, right? He makes really good plays on the football, really good when the ball's up in the air, and finding a way to finish it off. And last season, he kind of just exploded. Now, his worth the game did come against Ohio State. He doesn't have the great top end speed. That can definitely be an issue, which may limit him more to the slot role, but that's okay because he proved last season he could play the slot role, and the Lions could use that. But he also has proven he could play on the outside as well. I mean, aside from the out, aside from the Ohio State game, he played really well last season, and uh, it's really just he doesn't have the best top end speed, so he may have to give space. But he did, but he still proved that he could play well while not having the best top end speed, while also being mainly a press cornerback that plays in a man heavy scheme. And I'm expecting a lot of man next season, so I think for the Lions, the fact that he played inside and outside, he still played majority of the snaps on the outside, but he could play both is impressive. He he reacts to things. He shoots down. There's no hesitation in his game once again. I mean, he's fiery in that way. Go down to try to make a play. He's very confident in his abilities and what he can do. It's just, you know, he does get a little grabby. He can get a little over physical and, you know, he can get himself caught watching in the backfield in zone. I think there's definitely room for improvement because the majority of time at Michigan State, he was playing man coverage. Uh, so that will take a little time. But again, I'm not expecting a day one starter here, but he's a guy that can eventually turn into a starter for the Detroit Lions. Uh, he is a little bit shorter, which does show up. His height can show up especially on the outside. They throw jump balls. He can have problems going up there and making a play on the football. 2020 was a shortened season because of COVID. And 2019, he missed time because of injuries. But, uh, you know, he definitely has plays well. And for some reason, he's just getting overlooked. I don't know why. Whatever it is, getting overlooked. And Shakir Brown is a guy just, I had to pick again late. 58. I want that seven. Oh, oh, you have our seven. Okay, so we just got a deal. We did it with the Panthers. So I went back to 258. Huge jump back. But we got our seventh back from the Panthers. They took our seventh. I wanted to get that pick back. I think I don't know if I traded away a fifth this year. I think I may have traded away a fifth this year. Next year. I think I might have, and that stinks. Maybe No, I guess I didn't, because I did the trade with the Chargers, and there's no fifth for them. So I did get that seventh-round pick back, which is ultimately what I wanted to do, is just get that pick back for next year. I don't want a mortgage future whatsoever, even if that means jumping crazy far back. And uh, that means to say, I couldn't have the last pick. I can't have Mr. Irre Irre Irrelevant. That, that never works out. We had to have somebody. All right, now we're going to see who falls. If Goen falls, I'll take him. If Powell's there, I might take him too. Those are the two I'm eyeing here, but I'm fine with not taking another quarterback, I, oh, another wide receiver. I love Powell. I actually think Powell's very underrated, but I do think we have some solid depth at receiver right now, and uh, when you're talking about a hey, UDFAs, you could sign. I think it's easier to find a receiver, but I just think Goen, just how this, I would have done this differently. Oh, Elijah Griffin. If Elijah Griffin falls, nope, no, Elijah didn't fall. Let's keep this thing rolling. I think this is a strong seventh round pick, man. Just like those UDFAs that become something. I think going's going to become something. But going should not be this far. I'm telling you, I'm taking advantage of the simulator because that's what the simulator says, man. Going is a mid round pick. Please let him fall. A couple more spots. Roll Thompson falls. Roll Thompson, man. He just can't move, bro. He's so slow. He looks like he's stuck in mud. That's why I can't draft him. Noah Gray. I guess that's why he fell. Fitzpatrick. Okay. We are about in the clock. Chris Evans out of Michigan. And uh, Darren Hall is still here, but I'm definitely going to go with my guy, Tay, going with this pick. Uh, do we have any receivers that I love? No, not really. But if it hits UDFAs, um, Warren Jackson, definitely. Oh, TJ Vasher, too. Those are definitely a couple guys that you could grab UDFA-wise, get some maybe some outside competition. Buddy Johnson's still here. You could definitely pick him up in free and see because I think of his scheme, he's just an early down player. So there's a couple guys you can still pick up, but I'm going to go with Goen. The end of here up to pick number 258 with Tay Goen. I don't understand why he's falling this far. The guy to me is, if not a third round pick, a fourth round pick, somewhere in the range. Checking in at 6'2", 185. Yes, yeah, slightly, you know, slim, but not super slim. I mean, he could definitely add a little bit more to that. I think the biggest reason maybe he's getting overlooked is because he opted out of 2020 for his daughter's health. And 2019 was really the only season we saw him play in the FBS because before that, he was playing at junior college. So I think when you think about that, maybe that's why he's getting overlooked and uh, he really hasn't played in the slot. He's mainly probably going to be an outside guy at the next level. He does the great speed and height. I mean, those two things combined is what makes him really good. He plays very physical, sometimes a little bit too physical. Sometimes he gets pretty handsy and he doesn't trust his feet as much as he grabs, but he does it really well because he does it within five yards. So he's only had two penalties, which is good. It could show up more at the next level because he can find himself in a weird, awkward position uh, where it could force him to grab at the next level against the best receiver. So technique is going to have to clean up. But in terms of what he can do physically, his size and speed on the outside, 
outside is great. It really doesn't have that many penalties. Still hasn't had that many tackles, but it's just because he hasn't had that much experience against FBS competition. And even when he did play in the FBS, where he played at UCF wasn't the best competition in the AAC. So you're still wondering exactly how well he's going to translate to the NFL level. May take him some time, but again, he's a little bit more developmental. And uh, I think, you know, for where I'm getting him, the value is just insane here. I mean, I can't believe that he's falling this late. So take going to Lion. You could slot, probably pick him up as a UDFA as well. But that is our draft, man. So we have Tate going. So we have Rashawn Slater after the trade. We got Baron Browning, Richie Grant. So we got a linebacker, offensive tackle, safety. Then we had Kadarius Tony when we traded back up. Then we grabbed Monty Rice. Rice is a tough one. See, Rice may not have made sense. Rice only makes sense depending on the defense we go to. So we'll see. That one's a tr tricky one. I just had to take the shot and just see. Shakir Brown. Uh, like some Shakir Brown, he can play the slot position next level. And really behind Cornelder, I don't know how many guys can do that. I know that Richie Grant can. I know that he can. But Shak Shakir Brown can play both outside and inside. So if we ever need a slot for whatever reason, it'd be cool to have one. Plus teams are going to spread you out, so you need to have depth. And that's why I got going as well. He's going to be an outside corner, but he was really good in 2019. Good enough that he shouldn't be that far. But I'll take advantage of him, man. We'll make it happen. And we got our seventh round pick back next year. So we still didn't lose any picks next year, I don't think. I think we didn't lose anything, unless maybe we did. I don't think we did, though. And I think we end up with a very strong draft. The fact that we were able to get two, four picks in the top 61 is incredible. Two, Three picks in the top 50 was awesome and still landing Slater with a trade back was really set us up and I think we got two strong corners here and I think with the Lions having secondary coaches they'll be willing to develop those guys more than maybe you know other positions where you know Aaron Glenn is not really especially his specialty though is the back end I think they can help develop and I don't think we need him right now because Amani Dunbar you know you look at who else you have Okuda I mean we think we got solid guys Elder all those guys can start we got four right there boom but behind them you can develop Shakir Brown and Tate Goman behind this going behind I keep saying Goman going behind the scenes and then a linebacker you got Monty Rice could be something maybe next year maybe this year you know it depends Baron Browning though I think is definitely a lot of upside Richie Grant he's going to be that kind of phenomenal safety they just needed they just need someone back there that could play tremendous well and just move around and just use as a puzzle piece they just need someone like that Kadarius Tony, phenomenal receiver there. We just got a stud. We only got one receiver, unfortunately. I would like to get like a second one, but UDFA will probably sign one then. And then Slater. So there you go, man. What do you guys think? Let me know. Thank you for watching. And I'm out.